Podcasters. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode. I'm very excited to have with me Amanda Prochaska. She's the founder and chief wonder officer at Wonder Services. So how are you doing, Amanda? I am fantastic, Chris. Thank you so much for having me here today. The pleasure is all mine, but I am curious. I've never interviewed a chief wonder officer before, so I got to know what that is. You, can, you, can you give us some insight here? Yeah, so I'm not big on titles, right? So I, right. I, I like just knowing people, not, not their titles. So when I started Wonder Services, I was like, what really defines me at the end of the day? What, what has um, led to my path in my career? And mm. it was always curiosity, like wondering, mm. how do we do something better? Or could we tweak it here or there? Or how could I fix this? Or why are we doing this? So when I talked to my friends and family members, they, they were like, yeah, you're, you're always wondering about what's next and, and how things can be improved. So I am the chief wonder officer to keep that uh, ambition going. I absolutely love it. It's one of the best titles I've ever heard. So, uh, so now you got to tell us. So, wh- what's your what's your story? What got you to the chief wonder officer? So, I started in procurement. Uh, oh, too long ago. Twenty, almost twenty years ago now. And I actually fell into it. I was a international political economics major, French major, and um, I wanted to go into international business and. Uh, Believe it or not, one of the local French-owned companies had a buyer position open when I was looking for jobs when I was graduating. And I was like, I have no idea what procurement's all about. I just like to buy things. Like, who does it right. as a 21-year-old as right. or 22-year-old? <laughs> um, and so I applied, got the position, and never looked back. So had a wonderful year in procurement or a career in procurement. Started off in the negotiation kind of category management buyer role, Mm -hmm. but then quickly moved into transformational type roles. And that's what I really loved about procurement. There's so much change going on in that, in that organization, in the profession. So I started leading like big tech implementations. um, I uh, mergers and acquisitions in sourcing and outsource big process changes, policy changes, and um, it was a new new opportunity every single day. And I got to see almost everything that was going on in the organization at the same time. So I fell in love with it. And then three years ago, decided, geez, I could help a lot more people if I just went out on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took the leap of faith. I always wanted to start my own company. Um, always thought it would be like once I retired. <laughs> but I... Right. I was like, you know, why not now? Because there's so much going on in procurement, so dynamic. I, um, I, and I just wanted to serve more effectively. So I, I went into it and now we've been um, around for about three years and, uh, and I'm having a blast. No kidding. That's an amazing. Yeah. So what was the hardest part of making that leap? Um, the fear factor, I think I, mm. um, my husband were at a position where he's at home with the kids. So I'm a single income earner. So that was a big fear factor. Like, oh, sure. how are we going to pay the bills at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. But when I took a step back, Chris, it, it's all, it's all about analyzing that fear. Right. And, um, I said, okay, worst case scenario, what does it look like? I'm not successful. I fall on my face and, but what does that mean? I've learned a ton. I've made really good relationships and I'm competent, you know, competent enough and confident enough to go back to corporate if I really needed to. Right. So at the end of the day, is that really a risk? No, I think it's more of a learning and adventure path that I was willing Mm -hmm. to take. I love it. I'm I'm so, I'm, I'm so glad you did. So, I mean, what's been the funnest part about taking that, that leap? Uh, Oh my gosh. How much I've learned like procurement people and I, you know, obviously we're learning more about procurement folks in the profession um, together, but procurement in general is not, they're not really great marketers. Mm. <laughs> right. So right. when I went right. out on my own, I was like, Oh, I have to learn how to market myself and market my company and, and how to, how to really build those sales relationships. So all of this stuff that I didn't have to do in procurement necessarily, although it would be a huge benefit if I would have, um, so that, that was really cool. The other aspect is all the wonderful people that I get to meet like you, yeah. like, um, right. I don't know if I would have ever met, uh, half of the people that I know now, if I would have been uh, still on the practitioner side of things. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, that's great. Well, I'm so glad you did take that leap. And I'm curious because you do serve procurement. You serve that industry yeah. directly. You know, what are you hearing? I mean, what are the biggest challenges they're facing? I mean, I, I'm sure you have some common threads that just, just keep popping up and that you're yeah. trying to, to help solve. Yeah. I mean, there's the day-to-day stuff like inflation and, and mm-hmm. supply chain risk and all that. Um, digital transformation is a huge one. But the other one that I wanted to hit on today is um, people. Right? Oh. And, I, and I think this is across the board and maybe not just a procurement challenge, but there are so many open roles within procurement today and so many new and innovative roles that need to be filled. Talent is a real struggle right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so if anyone's listening today and they're like, Hey, procurement sounds like fun. Um, reach out to me. I would love to talk to you more. There's so many roles available and opportunities to work with some really great companies. That's awesome. Now yeah. for that one, that one person that's listening. And like for me, back when I thought about procurement, I just thought about, that's just the people I just need to get my PO from. I really don't no. need to do a lot from them. I just need to get the PO from them. So is there a common myth about procurement that you just want to absolutely just crush right now? Oh my gosh. We're so not procurement, like PO processors. Like that is so, uh, when I started in the industry. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so procurement professionals, they're looking at, how do we add value to the company? How do we drive innovation? How do we secure supply chain, um, you know, our supplies effectively and reduce that risk? Mm-hmm. They're also looking at sustainability, diversity, um, and uh, they're partnering with their stakeholders internally to make sure that they're getting the best value from any third party relationship that they have. So they're much more than PO processors. Unfortunately, that is the myth. Like, mm-hmm. I've, I've had, well, there's two things I've had, like, I have no idea what procurement is. My mom still asks me what procurement is, <laughs> but, um, and then you have the other side of what you just said, like, the, I, I just need to get a PO from them. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, I would highly encourage anyone that's working with procurement today to cast that aside and really look at them as a, a way, an innovative partner to work with, to expand your relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, how, how about advice? So somebody's out there and they're listening and they want to take that path. You know, what, what are you going to tell them? Where should they start spending some time or, or, or just encouraging them to take that procurement path? Well, first of all, if they're working at a large corporation today um, and they're interested about taking on a procurement role, I would start networking with folks in procurement, learn from them, understand um, what they do day in and day out, understand how your skill set could be applied um, procurement's really looking for people who don't have a lot of procurement background. Typically, they're bringing in people from finance. They're bringing in people from um, other their stakeholders, so marketing, engineers, whatever, to sit in the seat so they can really understand that that stakeholder need. We'll we can teach the technical aspects of procurement, but those soft skills are really important to have in that perspective. So that's for the one individual. If you're a salesperson listening to this right now, and you're like how do I start with procurement? Understand more about your, your key relationship holders. Have a conversation with them. Ask them great questions about what's driving them each day, what, what's keeping them up at night, what, what their metrics are, what they're trying to achieve. And if you, if you really get to know them on a more personal level, you will find a ton of opportunity to work with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Great advice. Great advice. Now, how about, now you're an entrepreneur now, but yeah. you, you spend a lot of time, it sounds like in the corporate world. So I'm just curious for your personal, what's your take on mentorship? Like, do you, do you have a mentor? Do you, do you, do you mentor others? Like how big has that been or how big was that for you to make that leap too, just to have some mentors to, to lean on? Okay. So I have a little bit of a different take on mentorship. Okay. So, um, I've never had like I never sat down with anyone in my career and said, would you be my mentor? Mm -hmm. I've never asked that question. What I did was build relationships. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, some of my best mentors, they didn't even know they were mentors to me and they were mentors because I didn't, I knew that I didn't want to be like them. (laughs) Right. So you can learn on the opposite side too. So to me, it was more about who do I want to emulate? Who do I Mm -hmm. want to mirror in my career? pick out who those people are and grow very, very close to them. Right. Um, right. And so I've had some incredible people like that in my career who not only would show me their way through their example, 
but then would also take the time to open my eyes to new opportunities and um, bring me into new opportunities at times. Um, but they just became really, really good friends Yeah. at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. But I think the, the key is relationship. Yeah. And, you know, and the bet when you know you have that relationship is when some, that person is in a room that you're not in and they can vouch for you and say really great things about you. That's really what you're, you're, you know, at the end of the day, that's when you know that you've built that relationship and, and that you can go places. Right. Yeah. Great. Great. I love it. One of the best mentorship answers we've ever had. Oh, great. <laughs> now I'm curious, man, you have the sign behind you that says happiness. So yes. I always, I like to know, I ask people all the time, <laughs> what, what brings them fulfillment, joy, but maybe for you is happiness. So when you're, when you're the happiest at, at Wonder Services, what are you doing? I'm serving other people. So um, several years back, I was at a women's conference and uh, the speaker was up there and she, she said, you can't develop other people around you unless you're developing yourself. And the first part of that self-development is understanding what your purpose is. And so I spent a lot of time after that, like thinking about what, what am I doing here? What is my purpose? And I came up with be the light to everyone around you, right? And if I can do that each and every day, then I know um, that I'm being the best, best example to my daughters, mm -hmm. um, that I'm being the best example to the people around me that I care about. And, um, and that I am fulfilling my purpose at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah. Amanda, we're going, we're going to take a, a little dive off. We're going to talk about you outside of wonder services too. Perfect. Cause I, I just want to get to know you as a person to speak yeah. about relationships. So, <laughs> yes. so what, what's some hobbies? What do you enjoy doing for fun? Um, I love to hike. Okay. So, um, actually I just had a, a work meeting yesterday and we were able to hike, um, and talk and it was, it was fantastic. So, um, most of our vacations include some sort of hiking element. Um, and I think it's the sense of adventure that I have. And that's kind of how I've led, led my life. When you're hiking, you, if it's a new trail, you don't know what's around the next corner and, um, and you can wander off path at times and find something new. So, I absolutely love that as part of my uh, hobbies that I like to do. So is it, do you, do you enjoy it by yourself too? Is it a, is it a mind clearing thing or is it, you always have people with you or. Um, it, it's a, it's a family activity. So we've always hiked okay. with uh, my daughters and my husband. Um, but like we were, we were down in Sedona last week and um, going on some hikes and there are moments during the hike where we're all kind of spread out. And so there are those individual times where you can just think and reflect and, and be amazed of the, the wonder around us. And, uh, um, so I like that, that it's family and there's some time to reflect. What's your most, uh, memorial hike that you've ever done? Oh gosh. Hmm. 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 It's hmm. a good question. Um, we, gosh, we've had so many. <laughs> You've had so many. So there was one where um, I, I remember it distinctly because it was a hike that we've done a lot, but mm -hmm. we, we would always stop at a certain point. And one day um, we decided to push on for another two miles one way and another two miles back mm. to get to a very amazing lookout point. Mm -hmm. And um, the benefit of getting up there wasn't the lookout point. It was each of us individually getting over the mental blocks that we had mm -hmm. about pushing on further and seeing my children work through that was probably one of the most memorable, um, uh, I, I guess moments in, yeah. in our hiking, because it's not, it's not just about the physical activity. It's, um, about, um, overcoming those obstacles in our life. Yeah. I mean, you're teaching yeah. them pers perseverance, right? There. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, on the trail. Right. Love it. Love yep. it. Now you, you've mentioned your children a couple of times and your husband. We, we love to know about family on Eco yes. SY. So, so what can you share with us there? Oh, well, I have two daughters, a, a 12 year old and a 10 year old. Um, and they are, we, we homeschool them, which has been phenomenal, um, for 
for our family, um, they're getting really big into my oldest is really big into ballet. My youngest is into fencing. So it allows us that flexibility. They're done with school by noon every day, which is phenomenal. Um, so they can go on and do their other things that they love in life um, in addition to school. So it's been fantastic for us. They, um, I like to include them a lot in what I do. So a couple of weeks ago, my youngest went up to a black tie event with me to celebrate um, one of uh, uh, a person in my life who's really important to me, uh, Jessica Walther. She won CEO of the year from a local um, organization. So instead of just going by myself, I was like, what a cool experience for my 10 year old to have. So yeah. first of all, get all dressed up, but then to be there as we celebrate other women who are making a difference in this world. That is awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. 12, 12 and 10. That's fun ages. So mine are yeah. 11 and nine. So yeah, we're yeah. right. I'm right there with you. It's fun, yeah. fun age for our kids. Yeah. Yeah. And then my husband, ex engineer, you've mentioned engineers in our past conversations. Then yep. he went on to be an accountant and he's had the wonderful opportunity of being a stay at home dad for the last 10 years. Um, so it is worked for our family beautifully. And, uh, so he, he is my rock each and every day, making it happen. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So like you have a wonderful family there. So thank you. Thank you for sharing with that. Now, also, I always love to find out from our heroes, you know, what do you enjoy consuming? Is there books or podcasts or, you know, what YouTube, oh whatever, gosh. there's so much stuff out there, but it could be personal. It could be professional, but I'm just curious on, on where you spend time. Okay. I do not spend time watching television. Okay. So I'm going to talk about what I don't do. I also um, stopped doing Facebook in December because I felt like it was just consuming so much of my time. Um, and it really wasn't a good use of my time at the end mm -hmm. of the day. So I decided to go cold turkey and um, quit Facebook. But where and I you're do... still here. It's amazing. <laughs> you, you survived. Right? I did. I did. <laughs> so um, and I'm much happier for it. So what I do, I, I actually have a, a fairly robust routine. I read a lot of books. Right. Um, and uh, most of it is about self-development. Um, going back to the earlier comment about if you're not developing yourself, you can't develop those around you. So um, I do a lot of that type of work. Um, and um, I spend time reading with my daughter, my 10-year-old daughter, every night. Um, so we have some really good uplifting books that we've been reading with her. Bob Goff is one of our favorite authors. Mm -hmm. Um, if you haven't uh, read any of his books, I highly recommend it. And, um, and then I've been doing a lot of U S history, um, okay. work through Hillsdale college and um, they have online courses. Um, so I've been doing lecture series just to, to refresh and learn from others, other mm -hmm. leaders of our past of how they navigated through challenging times. So it has uh, been uh, extremely valuable for me and uh, for my family to learn about these historical figures this year. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. We'll, we'll, we'll try to sync up some of those links in the, in the show notes for listeners out there too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, how about every hero conversation? We have a lightning round. So I'm just going to fire oh a bunch of ran random <laughs> okay. stuff at you and you just fire back at me at will. Okay. Okay. All right, cool, cool. Let's go. I always start off with the easy with a softball. The, the listener knows what's coming. So what's your favorite food? Uh I gosh, <laughs> the easy one, right? <laughs> no, I'm gonna struggle with this. I love Mexican food probably more so than anything else. Okay. So Mexican yep. food. Got yep. it. Got it. Yeah. And and that's me and our family too. We, if we have a choice, we're going Mexican hands down. So yeah. uh, uh adult beverage. I don't drink. So okay. water, water right now with, um, a little bit of sweetener in it, some mint leaves and some lime juice. So it tastes like a mojito. I'm, I'm game for it. I hear you. I hear yep. you. All right. What's your, what's your favorite app on your phone? Um, it is my recipe book. Uh, so when I manage my menu for the, uh, it's called paprika. Okay. Um, it manages my grocery list, my meals every night, the recipes, I love that app. It keeps me so dang organized uh, when it comes to managing the the meal planning for my uh, family. Well, I am glad you mentioned it because we our family needs some help there. So we're going to look at Paprika. Yes, and 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 get that app downloaded and see if it uh, maybe it can bring some sanity to our to our life. <laughs> Who knows? All right, what's on, what's on your nightstand? 
Um, I have a book of Abraham Lincoln right now on my nightstand, nice. um, usually a glass of water and uh, my phone charger. All right. Got to have those yep. chargers. What's your favorite sports team? Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Go hockey. They, uh, go hockey. Okay. Yeah. A hockey fan. All right. All right. All time favorite movie. Oh, gosh. I'm not a huge movie person. And I, this is going to sound really lame, but it had such an impact on my life. Beauty and the Beast, the original Disney version of it, okay. um, helped me understand that I wanted to study French, and it got me to where I'm at today. So uh, I even I don't know if I don't know if he's back here. I even have Chip. Oh, you got Chip there. Um, because it just had such an impact on my life. So I don't know if it was my favorite, but it was uh, definitely life changing in a way. Very good. It's one of my daughter's favorite too. So we watch Beauty and the Beast pretty regularly. I'll, how about a guilty pleasure? Uh, chocolate every night. Oh, oh, I am with you. All not, right. not only just chocolate, but salted caramel chocolate. Chocolate. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you, you, you went with the extra good stuff. Okay. All right. What's the, the coolest place you've ever been? Uh, Zion National Park. Nice. It, nice. Uh, in Southern Utah. It is, I tell people all the time, it is my favorite place on earth. I okay. go there every weekend if I wanted and, uh, or if I could, and it's peaceful. It's beautiful. It's, uh, just a place to, to check out if you haven't ever been. And a lot of hiking there. I'm sure I'm assuming. Yes. You yeah. 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 Awesome. All right. Last question. Dogs or cats? Dogs. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There's only one right answer. So any particular breeds? Um, I actually have two at home. I have a golden doodle um, and then I have a golden retriever Rhodesian Ridgeback mix. Um, and uh, That one's in my office every single day. He's my closest coworker. <laughs> nice. Nice. Love it. Love it. Well, man, it's been so great to get to know you here. And, and for Eco Ask Why, we, we always wrap up with the why. So if somebody wants to say, you know, Amanda, what is your personal why? What are you going to tell them? To serve others, to be the light for everyone around me. And if I can do that every day and bring value to your business, then um, I will be happy. And hopefully you will be too. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is I, I've, I've enjoyed this so much, Amanda. Thank you so much. We'll make sure we can sync up in our show notes for how people can connect with you directly. And, and just thank you again for sharing on Eco Ask Why. Uh, thanks for having me. What a fun conversation with Amanda. First time I've ever interviewed a chief wonder officer. I can tell you that. But I just, I hope you everyone can just pick up on her energy, her love for what she does, her joy, her passion, and just taking that leap. I mean, just, hey, you know what? I want to serve people. I want to just do the best I can out here. And, and she took her skills and overcame any fear that she had. And she's out there absolutely day in, day out serving. And I highly encourage, seriously, go to the show notes, check out the links to connect with her directly on LinkedIn. I've been following Amanda for a while now. She puts out valuable information. It's always going to challenge your thinking. It's going to help you grow. So highly encourage you to, to go do that. And can't thank Amanda enough for sharing so much wisdom and insight on this hero episode. Now, we need the war stories. We want them. The good, the bad. The stuff that happens that nobody's going to believe. Because we know those things happen, right? They happen all the time in industry. Go to the links in the show notes and send us to us directly. We'll put them together. And you know what? If you need us to call you and just have a conversation, we can do that. Now, if you're enjoying Eco Ask Why, share it with somebody. Send an email, send a text, whatever you need to do. Get the word out there. Do a rating, do a review. All these little things make a big difference and help Eco Ask Why get into the ears of more and more people. And what, is, what are we all about? We're about serving industry, people and ideas over products. So I just hope that this conversation was encouraging to everyone. And, and thank you again for listening to Eco Ask Why.